everyone and welcome to Ubuntu Master's first session for today. Uh, I'm Loic Minier from Canonical. I'm the uh, Global Director of uh, IoT and Devices Field Engineering based of Paris. And joining me today, we have two fantastic guests, Giancarlo, Giancarlo Fanelli, uh, CTO of Domot. Hi, Giancarlo. Hi, Loic. Thanks a lot for the introduction. And uh, Andrea Rosali, Senior DevOps Engineer at Domot. Thanks for being with us. So, hi, hello everyone. Hi, Andrea. Good to have you. Um, so, um, uh, Domot will be uh, giving us uh, a nice presentation today about um, the streamlined provisioning of uh, IoT devices. Um, you're joining us from like California and Italy, and uh, the idea behind Ubuntu Masters is kind of like to, to to bring the leaders from the industry so that you can share your success story and. Uh, uh, give us a bit of the tour on how you got there and share your insights about what you learned in the process. So thanks for, for coming with us today. Um, I'll be uh, also uh, asking you a few questions at the end of your presentation and I'll be taking questions from the audience. You can ask your questions at any time using the question tab uh, from the Bright Talk uh, web UI. Um, and uh, you can you can start them now or during the talk or at the end of the talk. Um, I also want to reassure uh, attendees that we'll be sending you a recording uh, so you'll get like the full video, including questions um, at the end of the recording. It will be sent automatically. You don't have to click anything. Anyone subscribed to see the webinar will, will receive a copy of the video. And in the attachment tab, uh, underneath the video, you should be able to find interesting resources, a link to the uh, uh, Telegram channel uh, where you can uh, also interact with us after the event. Um, and uh, in general, like other interesting resources to read. I'm going to start um, right now with the webinar. So on we go. Good morning and good afternoon, everyone, depending on where you are connecting from. Uh, my name is uh, Giancarlo Fanelli, and I'm the CTO of Domots, uh, the premier remote network monitoring and management solution, which has been specifically designed for the IoT world. And together with me, my colleague Andrea. Hello, everyone. My name is Andrea Rosali, and I'm a senior DevOps at Domots. Thanks, Andrea. Uh, so together with Andrea, three years ago, uh, we decide to create uh, a new reliable platform for the management of uh, our own IoT fleet. Um, let's see today what is Domots and why we need to create our own IoT device. Uh, we will, uh, we will um, cover the why we need to create this management platform and why we, we choose, initially we choose Ubuntu Core for that uh, platform. This, is, uh, this is talk is not about promoting Ubuntu. Uh, but among all the other things, Ubuntu Core OS was genuinely a platform we could very use, we could found very useful in replacing our old infrastructure that we use for our IoT fleet. This presentation, on the other hand, will be primarily around the architecture we had to build around that, so around the Ubuntu Core, to get the capabilities we used to have for our operation team and support team to manage this fleet of IoT device. The whole presentation will uh, uh, take around 40 minutes. We will have a demo around the end of the presentation, which will leave us time for question and answer session at the end of the presentation. So what is Domots? We believe in giving IT professionals and businesses the power to manage a growing networks and monitor all devices from everywhere at any time. So, what is the problem we try to face when we start Domots? We all know that slowly, but I'm sure about that, IoT devices will take over the traditional servers and PC as the dominant part in the enterprise environment. Organizations are, tra are transitioning from hundreds of endpoints to thousands of endpoints, and many companies are struggling with the challenge of managing these vast IoT networks. Just think about uh, what's happening in, in these days with more and more workers connecting to an infrastructure from their own private networks. They're working basically from home. It is becoming mission critical to ensure that endpoints do behave properly and do not create disruption on the network. So this is where Domots comes in, a leading remote monitoring and management platform for distributed networks and their devices. Domots Pro software basically enables organization to oversee multiple networks, spanning multiple locations, and all from one single dashboard. If an, an issue occurs on one of those networks, on one of the devices more than those networks, 
uh, troubleshooting come in place, and that can be done again through docs and without visiting the, the customer file, for instance. So the solution provided allows scalability to the companies from different point of view. A cloud-based service where users can add a new network in just around 50 minutes to be completely monitored in all every single device. So Domots is very cost effective in that, in that kind of view. So Domots is not only inexpensive as a service, but also in terms of man hour cost is setting a new um, level for the, for the companies that need to monitor networks. We provide a simple, secure, and centralized interface to all the networks and devices that our clients need to monitor. We, we said that already. So which opportunity do you get and how we get there? So far, Domots has been adopted around the world. We are in almost uh, all the countries now by more than 3,000 professional users that they monitor an average of 10 networks each. We have clients in several verticals, retail chain IT departments, we have a managed service provider, we have even audio video installer, both in the residential and commercial space. Depending on the market, we have been disruptive as in the audio video space, or just an add-on to the classic RMM solution that the managed service provider were already providing to their customer. They were providing uh, monitoring for PC and servers, we add on top of that the monitoring of, our, of the IoT devices. How does Domots work? As we said, we offer a simple and single interface. Either you, are, you connect to a mobile app or desktop app or to the web app. This interface connects to our cloud and our cloud users can retrieve data and remotely manage networks and devices discovered and controlled locally by software is stored on the LAN side, on the, the local level network. This software is called, uh, in our terminology, is called Domot Agent. It's basically a collector, it's a probe in that network. Users can install this Domot Agent on their own hardware. They can use a Raspberry Pi, they can use a Windows PC, they can use an Ubuntu server, they can use a NAS drive, a Synology app. They can even use a router. We have software for routers as well. Or for an, easy, an even easier approach, they can deploy the Donuts box. The Donuts box is basically an all-in-one plug-and-play device hardware for network monitoring management that comes preloaded with this Donuts agent software. And one of the most important features of this box is exactly the automatically updated capability of this box. So uh, achieving this functionality, you know, the fact that this box is always updated with the latest uh, version of our software is among the most crucial and challenging aspects of the design process in Domots. And this is basically the core of our presentation today, how we achieve that kind of managing of this fleet of boxes. Worth to mention that three years ago, Domots as a, as a group, which is a company named Think, and you might be familiar with this, uh, this name. Think is the most successful network scan app for mobile devices. Since the first smartphone was launched, Think is there, and it has now more than 30 million users, 30 million downloads. And every single user uses uh, use Ping on a daily basis for scanning their own network. Why is this important to mention about Ping? Because Domots leverage the device recognition methodology developed by Ping in our own scanning technology. Ping identifies not only the MAC address of the device and therefore the vendor, not the maker of the chip, but also using big data feed, it can it, uh, and feed it by millions of users, as we've been mentioning we provide a superior identification for types and models of devices through the collection of the data like the serial number, firmware version, or even more. So we are talking about the catalog of billions of data. Now, together with Domots, the engineering team from Think has developed their own IoT devices oriented to the car consumer market. This uh, device is called Thingbox, and uh, it's basically a, a cybersecurity or parental control and some other functionality kind of device. So what it, it, this is important because when things start to develop in this IoT device, Thinkbox, we choose to develop a common platform where both the Domot software, the Domot agent, and the Think software could exist. This, of course, opens synergies between the two companies, but also business opportunities. But more importantly, it also introduces some challenges. Both the Domus Box and Thingbox 
we want our, for both the platform, we want our own device to be future proof. A tool, a tool that our users, both the professional users in Domots and the, the consumers in, in team, would use in their networks for years to come. So that means that we needed to be able to update the device very frequently and safely, including the, the update of the OS level, including the update of the kernel level. It's good to mention that we, at that time, we had already a platform uh, in, uh, in place to uh, manage our own fleet, our first generation of Domus Box. And we will see that one. So Domus did already develop an early generation of Domus Box, which was based on traditional provision channel. We will see in details what the limitations were, but they were, and that's why we, we choose a different approach in the future. Let's have a look at that solution, just to set the background. So what we needed, keep in mind that Domus is a software company, but we had to deliver this hardware or basically have the image to our manufacturer party in Taiwan. So in 2015, we prepared an image with something similar, simple, very simple image, a bootstrap process to connect to a traditional configuration management tool, which was chosen to be SourceStack. SourceStack is basically an open source software for even driven IT automation, remote task execution. It's a configuration management tool. It is based on the its concept of master, on cloud and, and, and minions, which is, which is the client part. And the minion is basically keep a persistence connection with the master so that it perform actions requested by the master itself. We use the source stack for managing our own infrastructure, so we are familiar to that. Uh, so once we had to develop our own image, we basically put a minion in every single image of the early version of the box. As soon as it started, the bootstrap connects to our cloud and download the software that we need to be provisioned on that box, which was the Domus agent, which has been actually developed months after we, we shipped the image to our manufacturer partner. So what were the limitations with that approach? We didn't have a completely automatic update. Everything was mainly driven by a human action on the system to push new upgrade. Moreover, the upgrades were not transactional. Therefore, upgrading OS or upgrading the kernel version of our, our own image was almost nothing. Moreover, the uh, initial distribution we used was a, a Debian distribution, which was not, let's say, designed to be IoT ready. It was not shrink enough to be an IoT ready. But more importantly, uh, we, we had to use that own infrastructure for our operation team and support team. And there, are, there were limitations there in terms of reliability, but also in terms of security. And we will discuss that later in, in, uh, in detail there. So what's next? Three years ago, Andrea joined the company. We recognized that limitation. We had to think about uh, something. And uh, I'll give the word to my colleague Andrea. He will detail what, what, what has came next. Thank you, Giancarlo. So yeah, recognizing those limitations brought our team in the beginning of 2017 to sit around the table and brainstorm for new ideas. We had to build a new generation of Domus boxes. So after that period of research, we found almost all the answers into the Ubuntu core operating system and the Snapcraft store. It's an OS tailored for the IoT world so it's lightweight and provides them transactional upgrades. It has strict confinement so that each snaps access only to the resources it needs. Provides also manufacturer update control so we can easily deploy a new Domus agent and roll back in, ca in case something goes wrong. We then have a dedicated store where we publish all the snaps needed for our custom board, but we also have the Domus agent published on the public store so customer can try and install the Domus agent on their own systems. This reduced by a lot the efforts needed on both development and the dev and DevOps sides. But the Ubuntu core and the Snapcraft store covered only half of our management platform requirements. In terms of Snaps management, we were fully covered by the Ubuntu core ecosystem. We could issue a completely automatic and transactional upgrades, not only for our Domox agent software, but also for the kernel and the OS. But we were lacking some kind of board management. We were missing the remote troubleshooting channel that we had before, 
the channel is really important to us since it's the way to deliver a superior support service to our client. More importantly, we were missing a way to manage the bootstrap of new connected boxes. As a matter of fact, we still had the issue we initially faced in 2015. So we were commissioning the production of the board months before having the latest version of the software to be installed and its first boot in the customer side. As a matter of fact, relying only on the Snap solution would have meant that box would have been upgraded in six hours from the boot. So this was the frequency of our automatic updates guaranteed by the Ubuntu core at the time. It was clear that we had to design a proprietary solution to cover that gap and implement what we called a box management. But which are the needed features of a box management platform? So we wanted to ease our operation and supporting job. So a remote troubleshooting channel was vital to us. We wanted something easy to use, but also easy to integrate and extend for further development. Since we are going to connect our boards to our cloud, we needed a way to provide authentication for those boards. We also wanted some kind of report about board stages, so which snaps are installed on the system, at which version they are, which core settings are in place, etc. But we also wanted more. We wanted our boards to respect some defined policies. We want to be sure that the agent is always at the latest version, that a particular snap is present on the system and the ACSH daemon is not enabled. As mentioned multiple times, we wanted the box as soon as it is connected for the first time to the customer's network to issue an update of the software so that we were sure the user is using the latest version. Since we choose a custom board for our box, we also felt the need to assert somehow the validity of the board during the factory test executed by our hardware manufacturer partner. With all that in mind, we build the management platform in the following way. So our cloud infrastructure is made of four main components. Two backends components that we named Conductor and Brody that manages all the boxes related capabilities. I'm a SQL database to store all the data. An Nginx server that we use as a reverse proxy to route all the HTTPS traffic requests towards the backends components. And the Rabbit message broker to interact with all the boxes that, we are, that are outside and for backend to backend communication. But to have a complete management solution, we need one more piece, the equivalent of the old approach based on SaltSec, a minion. We then built a minion that we named Kevin that sits in each of our boxes. Here an overview of the technology that we use. Uh, as you may see, we actually really love Python. And worth to mention that we use the Tornado web server framework to build Conductor. Now let's take a deep look at each component. Let's start with the first one, Conductor, that is the heart of the management platform. So the board registration phase is a crucial step. The agent sends a registration request to the backend and is up to Conductor to authorize the board to connect to our cloud. Once the, once the box is authorized, credential are given to the minion, so Kevin, and so Kevin then is enabled to connect to the message broker. Once a board is connected then, uh, is able to interact with the cloud via the message broker and the cloud is able to send some actions to be performed on the box side. Here comes the remote troubleshooting channel that allow us to perform some actions like retrieving logs. This is very helpful when we need to investigate issues, manage snaps, like forcing a refresh or install a new snap, change system setting, like system time or change core settings, like uh, the, the refresh scheduling for the snaps or the SSH daemon settings, and also execute factory tests. Just to give a couple examples of conductors capabilities through snippets. So the remote troubleshooting functionality that conductors provide is delivered by a RESTful API. This API is crucial for us to interact with our fleet of DOMS boxes. 
Here is how we trigger a refresh of the Nomos Pro agent via that API. Since a refresh action is performed via SnapID interaction on the board, we have to specify the Unix socket where SnapID is listening on, and of course the URL of a SnapID API. We then have to specify the action we want to perform and put the name of the Snap. This is a simple, simple example of SnapID interaction. Of course, a broader set of SnapID API is available along with other kind of requests. But what will be a remote troubleshooting channel without common execution? So through as, lickly, as less strictly whitelisting approach, we can execute comments that help the troubleshooting of issues. For instance, here, we can retrieve the network configuration through the, through the heath coughing command. But the API is not limited to box interaction only. We have also a set of HTTP resources for internal management. Here you can see how we can get the list of installed snaps and some snaps info, like the channel, the version, and the revision. These info are retrieved from DB. And actually, with this query also, thanks to the query param, we can also force conductor to update, update those DB info immediately by query above at almost box. Let's now take a look at the other component. We named it Rodi, and it's the conductor's sidekick. It plays a fundamental role in collecting boxes status and keep the boxes in a defined state by the mean of the conductor capabilities to interact with them. Rodi is responsible of collecting boxes system state so that we have a snapshot of the system. We have the snap, the list of his tallest snap on a system at which version they are or which channel they are pointing to revision and version. We also have a specific, we also have our status on the specific configuration of those snaps. For example, here on the second snippet, we have um, the configuration for the core snap. So as you can see, the system is loaded, it's up and running, and the SSH uh, service is disabled. But Rodi is also responsible of keeping boxes in a determined state and to react and issue commands through conductor if something is not compliant with our policies. So we can define a set of policies that we want to enforce on our boxes. System settings, for instance, as you can see in the first snippet, we don't want the SSH daemon to be up and running unless needed for development purposes. Or maybe a set of snap to be installed on a system with some constraint on revision number as depicted in the second snippet for the core snap. So now let's take a look at the last piece of our management platform. Kevin is the minion software that sits in each one of our boxes. His role is to register the board first and then serve as a remote endpoint for our management platform. Its main capabilities are the one already seen when talking about conductor, so the remote command execution, file writing, SNAPID interaction, which also allow us to install packages from partner companies. Plus, it performs some additional stuff like SNAP interface connection management for the Domus agent or execution of board factory tests during the registration phase. Registration phase is a delicate one. If the registration fails, we cannot do any remote management of the box. The first registration occurs in manufacturer's plant during the factory test. So let's see how the process works. When the board boots up, Kevin is started, and if no configuration is present on file system, as it is the case for the very first boot, the registration phase takes place. Throughout the registration phase, Kevin drives an RGB LED to communicate the status of the registration. Authentication is done by sending to cloud box unique credential, so a sort of a fingerprint of the board, via post request. In the case that the request fails, a retry is scheduled. In case instead a fingerprint is valid, the backend, so conductor, updates the DB and provides Kevin with the registration token. 
it's now time for the factory test. We choose to use a custom board, as already said by Giancarlo. So we felt the need of having some checks to validate that the board has been correctly built and assembled. Therefore, we allowed our software to assess it through the execution of some tests. As soon as Kevin received the registration token, query the backend to know the status of factory tests. Since we are talking about the first registration ever, Kevin has to perform some tests, of course. Factory tests mainly consist of checking board network and file system capabilities. Result is then sent to the cloud and a visual feedback, feedback is communicated by driving LED. So if green, the board is okay. If red, is a bad one. So by the visual result, factory operators know which board need to be dropped. Then credentials and configuration is provided to, Ke to Kevin and the connection to the message broker is performed. So this is the flow for the very first board registration. Something similar happens after a board factory reset. By performing a factory reset, all data on disk is raised and Kevin needs to ask for the registration token once again. All the message broker credentials are of course invalidated and the new configuration is sent to Kevin. I will now pass the word to Giancarlo that is going to show you a demo. Thanks a lot, thanks a lot Andrea. This really brings me to the next phase, the demo. You mentioned about the um, factory test, which is one of the important keys or keys factor in uh, this infrastructure. Now, we want a way to um, not only give a feedback, a visual feedback, as you mentioned, to the factory test uh, personnel of which kind of board is fine, which is not, but also on our side, on our cloud side, monitoring how the factory is going, you know, which are the boards that have been produced, which are the boards that has passed the test already, or which needs to be uh, do again. So we can achieve that too, and we will see this live through a couple of, of uh, uh, query back in database. Let me see if I can get on the query board. Confirm you see the, uh, my, my uh, yeah. yeah, IntelliJ screen where I can query. I can query directly the database and see with a simple query in the last production based on the image we create in April, last production could be between the end of May and beginning of, uh, of June, they have performed a test on uh, 1,496 box boards. Two of them, they didn't basically execute the test until the end. So they have been discovered. They didn't turn on the light. They didn't been discovered. So the, the ones that passed the test is basically the 1,494. With the same mechanism, once uh, the factory has completed the work, they tell us, we produce this amount of boxes, we can really uh, very suddenly monitor which are the board, which are the MAC addresses of the board that failed the test or did not even pass the test. In this case, we will look at the ones that failed because there were um, file system issues or network issues. So if there were any issue, we can identify specifically which is the MAC address that failed the test and which is the chip serial number. As, as Andrea was mentioning before, we got a couple of MAC address and serial number, which is a secret inside the board to register to our platform. And this is uh, really what is very important for us in terms of the fa uh, factory test. As, uh, however, as uh, Andrea was mentioning as well in the past, we have also a way to monitor which are the packages installed on every single uh, board. So let's consider, consider this board. This is a probably a ThingBox board on our testing platform, my testing uh, lab. And by just selecting in the, in, the, in the database, we can see the last snapshot of image or, or packages that are installed on this, uh, on this board. There is, of course, a core. I just filtered for some of the packages. There is, of course, there will be a kernel, there will be a, a, a gadget, a, a snap, and our, our own agents. So the Thingbox agent, which is the software, the Domus agent, our software, and this Kevin, or the minion of the face for our management platform. It gives the version exactly and the remission as well. And the last piece of uh, uh, thing I want to show and demo is related to the uh, capability of, um, let's say, configure a specific box for something. So let's imagine, uh, probably Andrea mentioned that we have the capability of SSH in our box. 
but by default, the SSH uh, service is disabled on our boxes. But we want to enable for testing purposes, or we want to enable for troubleshooting purposes, or even for our uh, development purposes, the SSH. By doing a simple query, we can retrieve all the boxes out, out in, the, in the field, which has still the SSH um, service enabled. So SSH disabled default. And we can review all of these are just internal purposes uh, boxes of them. So this brings me to uh, really to the end of the presentation. Let's uh, just recap the result that we have achieved with our management platform. So Domus Agent update is now more a supervised, is no more a supervised action as we had with the old infrastructure. Thanks to the Ubuntu Core and the Snapcart store, we can uh, uh, package a new Snap, create a new revision, and then upload in the store. And we know that our fleet of boxes, thousands, tens of thousands of boxes, will be upgraded with the latest version in less than six hours. Reliability is also increased a lot. We now have a mechanism to do automatic and transaction upgrade. So we allow us, which allows us also to upgrade the US version, upgrade the Canada version in very secure. If, if, if something goes wrong, we roll back to the previous version. Now, a very flexible mechanism that we create, what does allow us to do? is also allowing us to partner with companies that they want to deliver new software on our board. We have the mechanism in place to do that. Thinkbox is doing it with Domots, Domots does with other partner uh, manufacturer. Now, thanks to the backend that we built, we have a secure remote troubleshooting channel that allows us to easily uh, perform a management of our fleet of boxes. So there is a, a benefit for the operation team, but there is a benefit also for our support team. So in the end, we also, we also have a, a a way to monitor the factory or the production of our uh, physical hardware through monitoring the factory test. Now we can really understand the defective board before even they reach our clients. Actually, they don't leave the factory in that case if we discover there was an issue during the factory test. This really brings me to the, to the end of the presentation and allows us to have some time for your own questions. Wow, what, what a nice presentation. Uh, thank you, Andrea. Thank you, Giancarlo. Very well, uh, well put. You really delivered like a nice tour of your solution, but also keeping like both high level overview, but also drilling down into details. You managed to give us a bit of the both end of the spectrum. So thanks for that. It was very interesting. Um, so we, we have like uh, 15, 20 minutes for questions. Uh, I'll be taking question in the uh, QA uh, tab that you can see uh, the Q&A tab under the, the talk. Uh, feel free to shoot them anytime. Uh, some questions came in as well, like uh, during the talk, so I'll be I'll be going through them. So uh, my, my my first question from the audience to you, um, Giancarlo and Andrea, is uh, um, as a general perspective, um, when you built your solution, you you had to be like a security oriented, a secure minded solution. So um, as a secure element on the network, uh, the security focus must have been important uh, choice when choosing an IoT platform. Uh, could you speak a little bit on how uh, you chose a platform for your products, uh, which aspects you looked at, and uh, what, what were the most important ones for you? Um, okay, Andrea, let, let, me, let me deal with this question. Uh, thanks, uh, Log. Uh, it's, um, it's a very true statement, what you said. I mean, uh, security has been definitely a very important piece of uh, in our approach and adoption of new technology, you know, uh, being, uh, being uh, domots and, and the board that we use being a part of the network is a part that need to be trust no so uh, actually let me tell you the, the truth since the beginning the two historical pillars in our internal way of working uh, have been security principle on one side and automatic testing for our uh, ci and cd workflow um for, for instance i would like to invite the the audience to check Check out the security white paper on the on the Domots website. It lists the best practice that we have adopted as Domots uh, to protect our infrastructure, uh, our Domots box, and therefore our clients' network. No, uh, just to give an example on the what we look at when adopting a new open source technology, we usually pay attention to some indicators that might um, how to say raise concern in terms of security. 
For instance, the number of uh, contributors to an open source project might lead to think, okay, the more contributors, the less chance of CD might be on that open source project. But also another indicator might be the, the last commit date for that same project. Now, if the, the project is kind of recent and it has frequent updates, it means that it's alive and it, it keeps up, it keep up with all the CVE that might be discovered on pieces of that uh, architecture of the workflow. Um, now, in particular, to the to the board, no, the Domus board and uh, even the Thinkbox board, uh, we choose the adoption of Ubuntu Core as the OS for our IoT board. And part of the decision there was also uh, coming from taking into consideration the security offered by that platform. As a matter of fact, no, the, uh, even though Ubuntu Core is, is based on Linux, it provides a solution to the distro uh, trust model, um, which is intrinsic in the, in the, in the other Linux uh, uh, distribution, like the OS need to trust the application. They are tied together, they are coupled in, uh, in other Linux distribution. Um, moreover, no, keeping the applications in, uh, in, uh, uh, on Ubuntu Core, always updated, as well as the kernel, as well as the OS on these IoT devices is very important from a security point of view. Um, let's consider just what we stated during the presentation. We were, we were looking for a distro, which was also as minimal as possible in terms of packages that it brings uh, with it, because the less uh, package or the, the minimum set of packages you have there, the, the easier way of keeping uh, that our board secure as secure as possible. Oh, Let me thanks. mention. Yeah. Sorry, it's our answer. So yeah, you, you mentioned everything from like the uh, the architecture of the operating system, the fact it was like uh, an actively maintained uh, uh, operating system and solution, and uh, like separation of operating system and apps, and uh, yeah, very, very complete answer and. Uh, uh, and of course, security updates of everything. So, so thanks for that. And the minimum um, scope as well. Like it, it's all making sense. Uh, your 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 choice of platform is is all making sense to me. Um, so may, maybe a question for Andrea. So um, uh, on on the topic of um, APIs. So you demonstrated a couple of um, APIs in your in your talk, and um, you've used on the SnapD REST API, for instance. I'm I'm kind of like curious. Was it important for you to have like APIs on the cloud side or on the device or like both? What what was like uh, important for you in terms of uh, uh, automation? Yeah. So actually, everything started thinking about the cloud. So uh, as seen in the presentation, we were lacking some kind of board management. So we wanted to do that, and why not? I mean, REST API is one of the best thing to do to deliver such service even for interaction i mean if we have to do, perform some some operation uh by ourselves but even for integrating our services with others that we may in the future have so we started thinking about and uh, the developing an api for the management of the board so uh we started from that we actually uh even uh, um we, we have the snapping interaction uh, on the client side. So Kevin is able to interact with the REST a, uh, API of SnapID in that case. So Kevin is not exposing an API by himself. He's just interacting with uh, someone else. In that case, is the kernel. So, uh, but I mean, API is not uh, um, a mandatory uh, thing for our cloud and for man the management platform. Uh, Rodi, the other backend component, uh, it does do not expose REST API, so uh, it uses uh, an internal timer, internal loop to, to to perform things. So it's not something mandatory. It's of course the starting point for us. It's of course something really important uh, for the even for the development and uh, integration. So for integration tests, it's something really uh, that is. The testing of the component, of course, is a, is a very simple way to interact with it just by calling some and performing some methods on the, on the resources that it, it exposed. But everything, yeah, really started on uh, for, for the management was, all, was our main scope for the, for the cloud side. 
So in, in, in short, like you, like you were not like uh, requiring the APIs you could do without them, but you were happy to find them and you, you found a way to leverage them. All right. Super yeah. good. Uh, super interesting. Um, so um, um, a question from the audience is, uh, uh, do you have like a way to uh, communicate with like edge devices? Is there a communication channel between your platform and the edge devices? Um, there is not a direct uh, communication from our cloud to the edge devices, but our board is usually hosted on the land side of a network. And that's the, uh, how we say, that's the bridge between our services, which is mainly in the cloud, to the edge devices. As a matter of fact, Domots offered the possibility to remote manage the edge devices on the local network, but it, it all starts from the agent itself. So the communication comes from the cloud and goes to the agent and then goes to the, the edge devices. All right, so your agent has some functionality to do that through, so your agent, you can do some of this um, communicating with edge devices. Right. Um, so when, when designing your, your solution, um, what was the mix of programming languages that you used? And, and what is a concern when we are designing your product, um, like the, the mix of programming languages you'd be using? Hmm. That's a very good question. Let, let me get that, uh, Andrea, yeah. since I was there uh, from the beginning in, in, in Domots. So. It's a good uh, CTO question, I think. So <laughs> yeah, it's, it. uh, yeah, because everybody has his own, uh, no, has his own preferred uh, programming languages. You know? And usually as a company, as a CTO of the company, you prefer to minimize the different, the different languages that you, you want to, 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 to use for your own service. Now, let me tell you that the, the project we present today is uh, this uh, management platform is all based on Python. So both the client side, which is our, uh, what we named uh, Kevin, which is uh, the, the software that is stored on the board is in Python, as well as the clouds part. So the backend part is also in Python 3. So for this project, it has been easy. Uh, we went to, to Python for one specific reason. We had the very good competence in Python, thanks to the fact that our own service, so the one that is offered to our client, is based in Python for the backend, but it's only part of the platform. As we saw in the presentation, there are other two components in this uh, uh, architecture, and there are, the other two components are clients. One is the front-end client for UX and UI, which is in uh, AngularJS. And the other one, the client, is the agent, the software that scans the network, communicate with the edge devices, and that client is written in Node.js. Now, why it's in Node.js is because, it, and this is why uh, I, I took this question, because it, historically, our agent was hosted on different platform that couldn't uh, host Python at that time. So we, uh, we have uh, the agent version for routers, we had the agent version for other uh, you know, distro in the past that didn't offer capability for Python. But when we came to our own board, the Domus board, uh, we could choose Python both for the client and the, and the, uh, the backend as well. Thanks. So um, I've got a question in French and I'm going to merge it with a question in English. And so you'll get like two questions at the same time. So um, the, the question is, um, is it is it possible to create like other platforms uh, with uh, the way you build one in the same way? And I'm going to, to connect that a little bit to um, um, the idea that when you were creating your platform, you were creating both hardware and software at the same time. So I'm, I'm kind of curious. Um, hot tied to the hardware as your current platform, would it be easy to deliver like a new product uh, uh, on a new generation like hardware, uh, keeping the existing software base and porting to a new hardware? Um, how, how tied are your software and hardware and, and how hard is it to reproduce basically? Okay, I can take it this one if you want, Giancarlo. Yeah, yeah, so. go ahead, Andre. it's <laughs> more your choice. Okay, so uh, it's actually not so tied. Say um, it comes. Uh, I mean, um, gr a great help comes from the fact that Ubuntu Core is providing some kind of abstraction layer with a regarding to the hardware interaction. And so this um, actually let us uh, uh, develop. I'm actually now I'm speaking on the client side because it's more hardware re hardware related. So developing a solution that it's not so tired with the, hard, with the hardware is relying on. Kevin is a, a, Python tree, a Python tree application, for instance. And of course, there is some uh, bounds to the, to the hardware layout. Uh, as I said during the presentation, uh, Kevin is able to drive 
uh, LEDs on the board to, to give some visual feedbacks. It performs some factory tests, so it has to know a bit what uh, uh, the hardware is running on, you know, the, the uh, GPO uh, to, to interact with LED and other things like, uh, for instance, um, we seen that we started from the beginning thinking about using uh, and developing two uh, boards that are quite similar, one for our service and for Domus, the other ones for, Fing for Thinkbox, but they have something uh, different. Uh, for instance, uh, Thinkbox does have a Wi-Fi module. So in the case of factory tests, we have to, to consider that. We have some, uh, Thinkbox has some different LEDs layout. And of course, Kevin uh, need to know that, but it's really a small part of the client code. So I would say 95%, maybe even more of the code is really agnostic from the hardware point of view. So it's really easy for us uh, to port the software to a new board. Of course, it depends on the amount of changes we are going to bring in. Uh, but for, for that part, it's really easy. Maybe I'm expecting some more uh, things to do on the kernel and gadget side of the Ubuntu core. So kernel, you have to, to provide a DTS um, on gadget side, maybe some tweaking on the bootloader and description uh, of the board as, as done for the kernel. For the cloud part, let's say, it's even more agnostic on, on the hardware side, except I think it, we in the future had a second Ethernet port. I don't know. I'm just, just a wild guess. Uh, we have to take into account that since we have a new MAC address to take into consideration. But I would say it's, it's not so tight. We can easily move and use a, a new hardware. That's great. So that that's a fantastic success. If you if you manage to have like uh, decoupled your, your software from your hardware and elegantly, yeah. and it seems you still have to test obviously things which are specific to your device. But in general, the the platform is serving its uh, purpose, and and it, it really helps you like like port new software to your platform or vice versa. Um, actually, a question maybe like the the other way around. So um, in in the case where um, uh, partners would be interested in targeting your platform. Uh, would you be providing um, access to your cloud or to your device platforms to partners? Do, do you have plans to do so? Uh, ah, this, this is a very, very good question, uh, Loic. And uh, actually, we do uh, kind of do something like that. Uh, we do not provide access directly to our cloud, but to the, our device. Um, let's think a sec for a second to our own board, you know, our boards, actually. As I described during the presentation, and as uh, Andrea has uh, uh, reminded during during his answer before. Now, both the thin box and the Domots box boards have many parts in common, but they are two different boards. Actually, uh, as Andrea mentioned, the actually the the thin box board is two different uh, kind of board, two two different generation. So there are, there are actually three. Boards. The the one for thin box, for instance, has the Wi-Fi chip that does the Domots box does not have. Now, why I mentioned that? It's because we do offer to the Fing users to launch a Domots agent on, on the on the, the Fing box itself. And this is achieved through this management platform that we described during the presentation today. So with the same methodology, we do offer to our partners the possibility to, to design SNAP packages and allow multi uh, or mutual clients that, that use both Domots and this third party platform our domots uh, to access to our domots board to host both the domot service and this 30 party service or application and this is all achieved with the highest security as mentioned before due to, thanks to the segregation between the different application on the ubuntu core platform so uh, yeah we do offer this capability to our partners Wow, that, that's great. So that's exciting. So um, I, I think we're going to uh, run it up here in terms of uh, questions. Um, so in, in general, we'll be uh, available uh, in a Telegram channel after this presentation has ended. And you can uh, shoot questions to the presenters and to me and to the wider Ubuntu team helping with Ubuntu Masters on the Telegram channel that you have a link to in the description of that, uh, of that webinar. 
the recording will also be sent to all attendees. So you, you, um, yeah, like I see some questions on like getting access to slides. You, you'll get you get access to the full recording at the at the end of the recording. Um, I just want to take a moment to thank again, like Giancarlo and Andrea. Uh, thanks a lot for your for your presentation. It was very thorough, very interesting, uh, both on the technical, but also on the uh, kind of like platform technical strategy side. So thanks all for sharing your your insight there. Um, and um, um, thanks for, for uh, starting Ubuntu Masters in a, such a splendid way. So thanks a lot. Thanks, thanks Andrea. A lot, thanks, Giancarlo. Thanks a lot. Goodbye, and uh, see you soon on Telegram. Bye. Bye.